uh, we have to pass uh, to the next uh, uh, afternoon uh, module. The title of the module is uh, Knitting, and this model will be sustained by Professor uh, Blaga. This is Professor, please, it's your turn. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to be sure that the students are there. Hello. Yes. Is anybody there? Hello, Professor. Hello. Wow. Oh, a lot wow. of voices. Hello. Oh, very good. Very wow. good. Wow. Wow. Hello. The dream, the dream of every professor to be shout. We are here. We wait for you. I was just probably very nice. Very you nice. listen to me that this is a critical time to I never have um, lectures at two o'clock my time because it's a lunch break, but doesn't matter. I am uh, I was waiting and I was looking forward to meet you again. I can't see the screen, so I don't know how you look. We will discuss tomorrow more. Uh, I told you I don't like monologues, but this is the situation. We will have to prepare the uh, the day after today for some applications. I heard you had very nice uh, presentations today and it was a challenging day, a nice one. So I hope I will uh, uh, complete uh, this day in the same style. And uh, talking to you about knitting, um, it might happen that you not to be interested necessarily in knitting, but um, as an engineer in general, uh, I would say that I hope you will be enriched with more knowledge in this technology, which I try to prove today and tomorrow that it is quite um, um, wide in the uh, applications. And I heard that our colleagues from Czech Republic had a beautiful presentation with some applications. As you know, if you would be here, you would be hosted in Yash. Yash is uh, located in northeast of Romania. Uh, unfortunately, these days it's not so pleasant to be in this part of Europe, in this part of country even. But we try to do our best and to continue our lives and to help as much as we can our neighbors. Uh, Yash is, a, is the second city in Romania as size, as number of uh, citizens. Um, it's a beautiful um, university city. It's a cultural, we call it uh, the capital, the cultural capital of Moldavia. Moldavia is the northeast of Romania and the symbol of the city is the palace of culture. Uh, being an Orthodox, um, mainly Orthodox uh, country, we have a lot of churches. He is a beautiful piece of architecture, the tree Yerarch from Yash, a very beautiful uh, monastery in Yash. I'm kindly asking you to uh, close the microphone in case that uh, is no need to ask something. If you want to ask something, you can write in the chat. Uh, and I I will uh, answer um, after the the presentation. We are University Georgi Asaki Technical University of Yash, uh, which is uh, the second uh, polytechnic from uh, uh, from uh, Romania after the polytechnic from Bucharest. As size, we have uh, eleven faculties. We have a certain number of students, of staff, staff and all the level of uh, education from uh, undergraduate programs to various uh, engineering disciplines and doctoral programs. We uh, own a beautiful library, which maybe you will see one day by the end of the project, who knows? Otherwise, uh, we know that it was in a, in a ranking list as one of the most beautiful uh, libraries. It is. Uh, it was um, funded by the royal family of Romania. Here are the two portraits of the King Carol and Queen Elizabeth, and we still have a, a royal family in um, uh, in our country. The faculty uh, where I uh, give lectures is um, the Faculty of Textiles, which was for uh, many years named Faculty of Textiles. Of course. Um, it's changed the, the, the name according to some, let's say, focus on some time. When I graduated, it was technology and chemistry of textiles. 
then it was the light industry. And now, because of the large addressability of textiles, we uh, entitled it industrial design and business management. We have a very strong uh, also department of engineering and management besides the, the um, technological um, ones. In general, textile engineering and design, knitting and apparel engineering, and chemical engineering, as well a very um, successful department of um, of footwear, and some uh, some a small uh, group of people working in furs, which are unique uh, unique in Europe. As you know already from my colleagues, we designed some modules according to the expertise we have or the main expertise. So, Razvan, can you help me please to mute someone who speaks in parallel with me, please? Okay, All thank right, you. I will check and mute uh, and mute this, uh, this person. All right. Okay. Do you record this? presentation or yes yes yes, yes it okay. is recorded Good. thank you so coming back to the purpose of uh, our uh, module it is that to in the context of the project which you already have been informed in we tried to um, to give you some examples of applications which are digitally uh, designed uh, and to uh, use the software and the expertise we own as universities and as uh, persons. Here in uh, in Yash, we have a um, well equipped, I would say, a laboratory with mainly with um, flat knitting technology, which nowadays is uh, in uh, industrial in the Romanian industry as well as uh, worldwide. So we have a very nice collaboration with the leader in uh, produce, producing machine and software, Stoll a company, a German uh, developer, which is uh, officially now entitled Stoll by Karl Mayer. So for those who studied some um, textiles, you know, you heard about this, uh, this provider of knitting technology. How we all designed this module is from the basics to uh, something more complex. In case that you already know some things, uh, then okay, just uh, listen again. Or if you don't know, I hope um, we will help you to understand gradually some examples. We all have examples in our modules. And um, tomorrow I, I will have the chance to work with you in a very inter interactive way. Uh, directly in the in my laboratory and i hope i yeah we will see each other we will discuss more uh, you will have uh, the whole day to uh, the time and the opportunity to ask question i will try also to need something for you so to see live uh, what is how is in in the laboratory just uh, um I heard the presentation about weaving and uh, yes, weaving is the first technology to produce fabrics. Knitting um, appears um, some thousand of years later, uh, just because the people need to have some products which cannot be weaved. Um, and some examples from socks, from gloves, which uh, by default, you know, because you are users, they are soft products which have different uh, properties than uh, than the, the woven fabrics. Examples of here were found in Egypt in the Coptic uh, Museum. There are present some fragments of, um, of knitted socks. As well, we have some funny um, socks with uh, also um, with toes. Uh, these days, uh, this can be produced on a very automatic technology from uh, uh, Shima Seiki company. I will uh, speak to you a little bit more about this. But these were the initial um, version of the socks. You see, this is uh, century four before Christ. And then, of course, uh, people started to move to migrate. And uh, in Europe, uh, the, the, these knitted fabrics came through uh, Spain, where it was a tradition that uh, Spanish people used to knit their hats. And for example, these are some gloves from Germany. They were found in a grave. They are gloves from somebody from a church, probably a priest. It's a beautiful jacquard structure. 
uh, you should know that um, uh, the, the knitted fabrics were not afford were not affordable to um, regular people because uh, they were poor, and uh, only the the people from high uh, level society uh, wear uh, these kind of things. And these are examples of some socks from uh, Spanish uh, nobile nobile people. Um, I found also a beautiful jacket uh, which was. Uh, worn by Charles I of England during his uh, ceremony of coronation in 1649. This is also, it looks like a rich uh, jacquard. You will see who, maybe you know who was jacquard and what he has done. Um, this technique of producing fabrics by knitting, manual knitting, of course, it is. Uh, it was uh, immortalized also in paintings and some examples it's here with a virgin mary knitting and with a shepherd who probably was uh, bored during uh, watching the sheep so he was using also the the um, wool to to produce something in a logical way uh, uh, the technology um, developed, so we did not expect that we remain to the needles, to the manual needles. And a very crucial point in the uh, knitting uh, technology history is uh, in the year of 1589, when a Reverend William Lee from England wanted to impress his wife with a pair of stockings. You see here this image. So he um, created the first uh, frame we call it is not exactly a machine but it is something that was capable to produce some tubes if you look here some tubes having also some uh, toe and some heel so this was the beginning of the um, mechanized uh, knitting machinery an important figure in the history of knitting is um, the french uh, the french weaver uh, joseph marie jacquard uh, he developed uh, the mechanism, the jacket, what we call jacket mechanism, which means a um, uh, type of mechanism, which, which of course now is very modern. It's electronic, of course, but the basic um, the basic uh, principle is to select different yarns with different colors, and to create some uh, colorful pattern into first into a weaving into a woven, and then uh, later was adopted for. Or also for the, the knitted, knitting machines. If you look in your closet, I'm pretty sure you have a colorful uh, pullover, which we call it a jacquard, exactly due to the fact that that is uh, containing more colors, or it's a colorful um, one. Maybe tomorrow we have time to design together a small a small example, which is not in the in the in your materials uh, from Moodle, but uh, can be created on spot. I will see how fast and how interested you are. Naturally, the things uh, went uh, um, going went on. And I have here an example of uh, a circular knitting machines, uh, knitting machine which produce either stockings or socks. So we talk about another technology of producing um, some small size, let's say, um, knitted fabrics. These were taken, these are pictures taken by me when I was in Munich in uh, the Museum of uh, uh, History, of Technology and History. So I took some, uh, some examples. Here is uh, an older uh, world knitting machine, which is a completely different technology. We will uh, discuss a little bit about it. The, the um, Common example uh, about uh, word knitting are the curtains we have, which means from a small sock that I mentioned, a big and large um, size of, of some material. And we come to an older generation of automatic machines. This is one example of a machine from Stoll from 90, 1990s, the, the model. Uh, and then easily, of course, we reach to uh, nowadays. It, this is not exactly the latest, the latest, the brand's new generation, but this is the generation of the machine uh, which is populating uh, most of the companies because they are automatic machines. And uh, above all, they are um, the designs of the, the fabric are done 
by the software. And this is the reason we thought that in this project to show you different options of the software we um, have and we have uh, expertise on using it, which will uh, hopefully we believe that will give you um, a larger idea about the, the design, the process of the preparation stage before going to, um, to the machine. Um, the Stoll, as I said, they, um, the royal family, uh, they have here a, a small um, piece of fabric for their new baby board and they, yeah, Stoll is, um, they, they did it, they customized it for the, for the young couple to, because it's soft, because it's nice and because we'll uh, offer the, the necessary comfort for the, for the new baby born. The most complex and the most advanced knitting machines existing now on the market, they are uh, those who are able to produce the completely the, the garment on the machine. And when I say completely, it's not um, to have a 2D form of a sweater, which was uh, an intermediate stage, but to take out, and here is a um, um, small image, um, suggesting this to take out the entire um, the entire um, product, not the fabric, but the product entire from the machine. I will show you tomorrow in the lab. Now I'm in my office, but in the laboratory I have a lot of samples, and I will be able to show it to you. A sample of um, um, a pullover taken out from the machine with uh, uh, in in their raw states without being uh, finished or um, yeah, finished in, in a certain way. Here is the part for the, this is the most advanced uh, programming uh, part also. The, the programmers who are capable of producing this kind of programs, they are very well paid. Um, they are very successful also because they are the, the, the brain of a company. If you have such a person able to, uh, to program various samples because the 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 request of the market and the, of the customer is very different then uh, of course you you will uh, pay back and you will reward his or her work it is a, a very challenging work uh, you never get bored because you don't repeat the the patterns you don't repeat the designs and of course if we think to the the value chain of the products the the pressure and the quick response which the customer uh, needs, uh, it's very challenging these days. So i give you an example, somebody, I'm collaborating with a company in Romania and they receive uh, an order with four pieces of a fabric with a unique style, uh, one, one piece per, per size. So uh, they had to answer in few hours how much cost, what will be delivery time, uh, to create the, the requested design and, um, of course, to, to be of a very high quality. And for this, you need a very, very well, um, well um, uh, instructed uh, human resources. The technical, the technicians, how we call it, the technician must be really very, very well uh, trained. We here at the faculty, we give the students the basics of pro programming, but we have a, a lot of successful programmers, which they have a good jobs uh, either in Romania or in, in Europe. And um, this is the reason uh, we have this, uh, these classes and we have this laboratory. So there is a, a request and uh, there is a need of the market. Here are some examples of the complete uh, garment. I will, um, I want just to, maybe you will keep in your mind that we have in fact two different brands. Whole garment is the brand um, belonging to Shima Seiki, to the Japanese companies, which is of course the direct, um, how this competitor to the German producer Stoll, and they have the, the registered brand Knit and Wear. It means take it from the machine and go outside and wear it. And these are the two brands. And um, uh, maybe you will, uh, sometime you will remember of it. Some examples of the very complex products, maybe they don't look spectacular or it seems not to be spectacular, but they don't have any kind of sewing. Um, 
Of course, this means a sustainable technology, which is eliminating the waste. It's eliminating some subsequent operations. I will show you some other examples, um, which is fine. But this means, so you, if you want to have such a company, you need a very, very uh, high uh, trained human resources. So you have to compensate this because everything is done on a single stage on a machine. Maybe more impressive, but I don't think I, I put it here, but I have in the second uh, presentation, if I will have time, if not, we will continue tomorrow. It is uh, the medical field where the absence of the, the soon parts are more important than for the design. Because here in the design, you see, you can create, you can still sew things and maybe they will be not so uh, crucially important. But in case of medical, when the products, for example, has to help people who needs to wear it uh, directly on the skin, the, the absence of the soon part are really um, more important. And here the applications are, um, are significant uh, in this sense. Of course, on the catwalks, we have a lot of fashion. Um, maybe uh, if you look to the Bose website, especially on the Shimaseki, you will see uh, very beautiful collections, which are not uh, maybe in our uh, regular wardrobe, but they can be really, really spectacular. They work with uh, designers. It's not enough to have a good technician. Uh, Shimaseki is working with Italian designers. Um, as well, uh, Stoll, they have um, an in-house design, so it's a, it's a teamwork to, um, to, to deliver such product. Because I, I, uh, I showed you some old uh, paintings, to bring you from the history to um, actual times and to our laboratory, this is an example of a knitted fabric uh, created with one of my students. She's now a um, master student in uh, England, art one. We tried to uh, reproduce the famous painting of Gustav Klimt. This is an Austrian uh, painter. Uh, and this is famous, is the most known of his creation, the kiss. And we tried with our equipment to, um, to create by knitting. So it's not the printed one, it's by uh, interlacing the, the yarns, we will see how exactly we created this uh, this beautiful portrait the purpose was to have um, and these are uh, and this is uh, this is an important picture because it is the same drawing it is the same digital pattern but knitted on two different machines namely on two different gauges so the same uh, program was uh, knitted on a five gauge machine we will talk tomorrow about the gauges and on 12. So you see the difference in size. And of course, this one is, is uh, more beautiful, it is very fine because we have different stitch densities. And we will also uh, discuss about these parameters of the knitted fabric. But this is a good example of, uh, of playing with the parameters in these fabrics. Uh, this is the machine where we uh, produce it, one of the machines we have it in laboratory. And uh, the purpose was to, um, to recycle a dress, which was already worn. This is the author, Andrea. And um, we, we put this panel of, which was uh, detachable, I think it's correct, a panel to be uh, able to be taken and moved from a piece of fabric, an old fabric to the other. Uh, nowadays, I heard that she has a new rucksack with these panels, which is, um, um, which it's a, a direction in which we would go by um, by recycling, by reusing, by trying to uh, to be sustainable because this, this is the 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 key word in this case. Why this technology um, should uh, be interesting for for the people, of course, who knows it or who practice it or who are curious about it. Why is that? Um, I tried to summarize some features of this because the fabric range, um, fabrics range is very, very large, is very diverse. And of course, I cannot um, uh, put in a single presentation the entire, um, the entire uh, 
<clears throat> range of fabrics, but I tried and I, I tried to summarize as much as I could through pictures, uh, ex the various examples, and they will come. So we have various fabrics from uh, very fine ones to very raw ones, from you heard about something which is circular, from a very white as and a, a plain fabric, we will see also 3D fabrics. I heard that today already uh, have seen very nice uh, 3D fabrics. Um, then by playing with some, uh, some um, technological parameters and of course by using the right technology, we can create uh, materials with different properties. Of course, all these properties are um, uh, engineered according to the end use of the fabric. We don't just produce a fabric to be produced. We will, of course, first um, see what is the, the concrete application and then we start to extract the main properties, the main request. And then, of course, we go back easily to the design process, at the beginning of the design process where we have to uh, decide on the yarns, we have to decide on the shape, we have to decide uh, on the technology we use. And uh, in a nutshell, we have to decide on, on which finishing process has to be applied to create at the end uh, either fashionable or functional or intelligent or uh, a sophisticated uh, fabric. And from here, of course, all, all discussion. What is helping a lot uh, besides the, the um, very well technological equipment existing nowadays in this industry is uh, what I was telling you before, the software and all these uh, computer edit design systems, which are crucial uh, in, in case of industrial manufacturing. Otherwise, you could not keep the, the rhythm or the business, of course. There can be uh, small um, companies or uh, design companies who are not necessarily use this, but as far as I know, even those, they are not uh, manufacturing all manually, at least the patterns and the things which are given a, a better time of production are used. So this is, uh, and yes, this is the, the, um, the meaning of our project and the, the examples uh, you were given so far. Now I will start to discuss a little bit from what is written in, in our material, just to uh, help you to understand and to have a common, uh, common uh, wording. We know that knitting is a technology. What is that? Is a, a process of transforming uh, some yarns, no matter what, into uh, some loops by uh, bending them. So uh, if in the weaving fabric, the, the yarns are, are straight, and they are, uh, you heard the presentation um, of Benny. Here we have uh, uh, another mechanical process of transforming these yarns into uh, what we call the unit cell, the loop. I will show you immediately. We this di divide the technology in two big groups uh, according to the direction of knitting. One is warm knitted fabric and one is weft. Um, you already know the term warp and weft. When you when we discuss about weft, we think immediately of something horizontal, horizontally uh, uh, manufactured, while warp knitting means the direction of uh, vertical. So in case of weft knitting from a single yarn, uh, the, the loops will be formed one after the other. While in work knitting, we talk um, a number of parallel yarns which are manufactured um, uh, along uh, to, to the vertical vertical direction. Uh, it's, they are completely different technologies. Um, I have a comparison of the structures, but if I have to um, quickly compare the two ones, I will say uh, just a rough discussion that in weft, the, the the flexibility of production is higher because you set up a machine uh, easier. 
Why is that? Because we don't have a, num a high numbers of yarns. We have some bobbins, of course, in the circular machines. If you have seen circular machines, we speak about a, a larger number of bobbins, of cones. Um, but anyway, compared to the work meeting where the, 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 this number of, of yarns, they need a preparation um, stage, which is a call. Um, ah, I don't remember the English word, but I remember. So preparation of this arrangement of the yarn coming from the beams, uh, the machines are quite or much bigger because we uh, discuss about larger um, width of production and about this preparation um, um, preparation warping is the the yeah warping from warp is the preparation stage for war knitting machines of course we have a large um, uh, a large group of of machines which are separately by in case of weft knitting on flat and circular and it's easy to intuit and in case of work knitting in Trico and Rachel, and by the way, Rachel Elizabeth Flix was an actress who used to wear in Paris in 18th century some very nice laces. And these machines, uh, Rachel, are designed mainly for spectacular patterns. We talk about very nice laces. Just think about the, the beautiful body uh, wear for ladies. Uh, some very nice curtains. So this is the reason that the machines were named Rachel. So it's a it's a, a women name, a famous one, of course. And I will not insist in so many categories of uh, of machines. Just to have an idea that this is not a simple, straightforward one machine, one fabric. And this is probably you know. Um, this is the principle I was talking to. Uh, uh, to meet on the vertical direction in case of warp and on horizontal direction one by one uh, from the same yarn, different um, loops. Of course, the size of the fabric depend on the size of the machine or on the diameter of the machine. Uh, as well here, the size, the, the width of the fabric depends on how many uh, yarns we use in parallel and how many yarns we warp for a certain application and when i say application i uh, um, told you about the um, curtain which is quite a large product but we can also vary to the range of um, narrow fabrics which can be cords or some belts or something like this so to have an idea of the the range of the width which can be produced on these technologies. Um, a schematic representation in case of weft, because tomorrow we will have to draw some loops, some stitches with face, with reverse uh, aspects. So we have to, to know some terms that I will um, use tomorrow. And my kind request is to go through the, the glossary of terms. It's a simple list which will help us, me and you, to uh, to communicate well. So we have, of course, the unit cell, which is a loop or a stitch, but uh, basically we can call it a loop. The stitch can be also from the sewing machine. So in order not to be confused, you can use it the loop. Loop, which has a leg, which has a head. And the, the head is important because the head is the part which is uh, uh, hanged on the, the, the needle. Um, we we um, we discuss in terms of courses, which are uh, horizontal um, rows in the fabric and wells, the 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 vertical ones, and we will see uh, what are the names in English of various fabrics. In case you know these things, just let me know, and I will skip and I will move on faster. I don't know your background exactly, so. I try to be um, um, to to include everybody in the presentation, but anyway, I'm sure the technical language is also a good achievement for you because the terms are not uh, um, at the hand if you did not study a serious literature. So it's a good exercise anyway. I hope for you. In case of warp, as I said, we have these uh, yarns. Maybe you will ask yourself how we connect these yarns if they are parallel. 
uh, there are various lappings, we call it lappings, um, like this one, and you can see it here. We have yarns which are crossing um, the needles from different uh, columns. Otherwise, we have just some chains which are not connected and we cannot speak uh, of a fabric. And here the, the things are very much complex. The structure, the word knitted structures are very sophisticated. But as long as you know uh, the rules of representing them, of understanding the technology, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you start to, to like them. My personal story with this is that, uh, of course, I was frightened about these structures when I was a student and I end up in making the PhD in this field. So never say never, because I started to understand at a certain moment, then, uh, yes, I get into the deep um, understanding of the technology. If, again, I would have to compare the two weft and warp technologies um, in terms of applications, of products, of um, end uses, warp knitting uh, offers more. As I said, is more sophisticated, is more complicated, as well. the The range of the the products is is um, larger, but there is also a, a weak point, a missing point on this technology. And I probably I I never heard that in late last years to to be other, is that the three D shaping. 3D shaping is not yet possible. Yes, we can produce on word knitting machines various thickness. I will show some examples. But uh, this 3D shaping, which we will uh, address tomorrow, uh, typically possible and um, I would say easy possible on weft knitting machines is not possible on the other. So, yeah, but if you, you would be an entrepreneur, for example, and you want to start up a company, then you need a lot of investment to set up a company for warp knitting machines, which are more expensive, which uh, require um, larger um, production spaces. But of course, once you have a market, uh, of course, this is worth it. So this is the reason uh, why, in at least in our country, we have more companies having weft knitting technology. We had. Um, we still have in Romania a big company producing award knitted fabrics, uh, mainly curtains and uh, sports wear and sometimes some technical uh, fabrics. But it's not uh, the same uh, large like this, uh, the other industry, the weft one. Just a, a small comparison between the two. Uh, if we go in deep to the fabric properties, of course, this principle of knitting on horizontal versus vertical direction, of course, has an impact on the, the knitted fabrics properties. And here, just shortly, you have also in your material, if you will read the, the, um, the module, that um, we if we we run uh, the web knitted fabric then we have only few yards i already said that we have some limitation in the structures because it's uh, we don't have such a such a large variety we have a lower dimensional stability um in horizontal direction but also this was um solved let's say by the producer in case we want something different uh, we we discussed about stretchability of the fabrics, um, and if uh, we we stay in the field of uh, garment, and then we can say that if you looked at your body, for sure everybody has a weft knitted fabric under the uh, outerwear because all um, all innerwear is uh, is made by by uh, weft knitted fabrics regularly um, made of natural yarns. There's no need to confirm because I know. Then in the case of warp, uh, again, having this direction of knitting, uh, we have a higher stability on this direction. Um, the fabric of, are more stable, um, depending also of, of the yarn used. Um, when I say about yarn used, we have to, I have to stop with the explanation to the gauges of the machine. For those who are not familiar, the gauge means the number of needles per one inch. 
and in case of web, this machine or coarser. And uh, if you look at your sweater of your, um, yeah, uh, also underwear, but outerwear, you will compare to the word knitting. They are coarser, they are uh, heavier, they are mass can be bulkier, uh, more volume. In this case, we talk about fine structures. Word knitting is typically uh, uh, designed for machines, designed for having very fine uh, structures. And I told you about the uh, women underwear, uh, especially from laces. But I also uh, can mention, for example, the, the costume for the, uh, the swimmers. For the performers in, in swimming, uh, which, for example, are made by this shark skin. I wrote here an example of the shark instructor. This is typically constructed to help the, the swimmer to get more uh, speed into the water by imitating the shark skin. Uh, it's a very it's a very nice technology. Um, uh, pity that is not so spread, but uh, uh, there are countries uh, uh, which are populated with this kind of machines uh, and the closest I know is Turkey. We also have, as I said, but it's not so um, popular lately. There are some uh, terms here and uh, you will hear me talking about elasticity, stretchability, fabric recovery. Compared to the woven fabric by default, by their nature and by the way of um, uh, making the fabric, the knitted fabrics are extensible. Uh, they are not so stable as, uh, as the woven, as you understood by now. Of course, um, we can talk about elasticity, which is the first, uh, let's say, stage of stretching when we, we stretch a fabric. In There is a, a first phase where it is elastically deformed, so nothing is happening in the uh, inner structure, and this is called elasticity, so without being deformed. And then, of course, we go uh, further with the deformation if we, we still apply the tension the outside, and then we, we can also reach the the plastic deformation, and there is a lot of, of research in this uh, in this sense. So we have stretchability, elasticity um, as typical uh, properties for the fabric. A very important parameter uh, for the fabrics is the stitch density, which is directly related to the machine gauge, because when we have a coarse machine with Few needles, of course, means something. Uh, yeah, of course, some the needles are bigger. Obviously, we will have a larger loops, and we will have a looser fabric. This is uh, a type of this density. Uh, while uh, having very fine machines with more needles uh, on the the same same inch, the inch is two point five uh, centimeter. Obviously, we'll have finer yarns and we will have um, a higher stitch uh, density. And of course, different different fabrics. And we defined it this as a, uh, we, we have, we, we in, if we go in the, into the research part, we have uh, um, the, the number of whales per, uh, per centimeter or the number of courses. But we have also stitch density, which is um, these two, um, multiplied together. So depending what uh, measure unit we want to uh, to analyze. But this is really important and this is given, uh, of course, together with the yarn properties and some other things uh, is given uh, further um, properties for the fabric. Because tomorrow we will um, we will program the one of the basic structure of uh, in knitting, which is a single jersey, and this is an example here. I have chosen um, an example of application for this uh, because I remember one student uh, asked me what we can do with this fabric because it's not imposing, it's not have that doesn't have a thickness, doesn't have a shape, doesn't have a, moreover it tends to curl. You will see uh, here is a an um, artificial muscle you have it here in fact is an intelligent textile having an actuator and the, the, the students from um, from Czech Republic understand the best this part 
I envy your specialty because you know this electrical part we discussed before entering here that you can give the high added value to our surfaces. I can produce it, you can um, transform it in, a, in an intelligent part. Um, and this is an example of a very simple fabric which can be applied in the medical field. Uh, of course, from the uh, fully fashioned, this is a piece of fully fashioned fabric to some nets which are using um, um, in medical field orthosis, some um, uh, sandwich fabrics. Tomorrow we will do a fabric of such uh, um, structure, but not so complicated because it's not straightforward, but you will see how we can uh, program such a fabric. Um, the, 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 uh, the size of the application is very big. I thought this will be interesting for you, this uh, energy harvesting uh, textiles. I don't have any experience on my own with this, but uh, I, you can recognize in a knitted fabric some conductive uh, yarns, which can be um, directly inserted uh, through some technique. For example, here, the, the knitting machines are allowing to do such structures by using intarsia technique which means that you can knit on a very limited um, um, parts of the fabric, some uh, conductive yarns without interrupting all the circuit. And of course, you can imagine a uh, various um, application, these piezo, uh, piezo patches here behind the, the these uh, trousers can uh, help in um, as an energy storage. So it's a simple fabric as a structure, but uh, the application is interesting. In case of ordinated fabrics, I would need a semester to talk to you about it. But um, I thought it would be uh, funny to show you the, the uh, satellite antenna here, because always when I present the, um, I present quite often this, uh, this field, the textile one to the youngs uh, coming from high schools. And uh, always my my title is textile from the earth to the moon. And yet uh, I haven't been to the moon, but this is from one of the uh, Apollo missions. And this uh, this satellite is a world knitted fabric having also some silver yarns in the structure. Of course, uh, if we talk about moon, we talk about astronauts and so on. But now I'm limiting myself to uh, the, my field. The car seats were spacer fabrics made in warp. Uh, this is the, the 3D, um, if we can say this is a 3D uh, shaping, then yeah, it's a 3D fabric with different thicknesses. This is possible to be created on the uh, world knitting machines. Uh, we have uh, these vessels, which can be done also on weft, but uh, they are uh, rather known and applied on work knitting machines and um, <clears throat> so on. Our module, because of the applications we are going to do tomorrow, um, is uh, limited to weft knitted fabrics. I told you the, the laboratory is equipped with these machines. We have also some work knitting machines. But the interest towards this, uh, this technology in our country is lower. So we are focusing on this. The, I don't think it's the case to insist on, on these terms because you can read them by yourself. I would rather take some time to show you some, uh, some other things about knitting because this is written already. It's simple that you have a horse, you have a whale, you have a loop. What you should know to be able um, to um, draw tomorrow, but I will tomorrow it will be uh, learning by doing. I will do it. You will. I will demonstrate something. I will stop. You will doing after me, and we will see what is the rhythm of uh, your learning, and I will adapt myself. How do we form um, uh, a loop in general in weft? Uh, this uh, needle is. Um, going up in a, we call it clearing position, it receiving an yarn and then it's, it is knocking over through the, the older loop. So this is the way we form the loop. 
a very important parameter for the machine is the um, the loop length, which is given by the, the size of this loop and which consequently uh, influence the stitch density on which we uh, we discuss a little bit before. Uh, tomorrow we will draw this these fabrics. These are the basic structures in case of weft. We know what is weft. We recognize a single yarn one by one. In case of plain knit, as the name it says, we have a, a simple fabric, and this is given by the fact that needles here represented they are in the same needle bed. The needles are posted in a needle bed, of course, somewhere, and it's only one row of needle, which means that all the loops have the same uh, uh, appearance and they are uh, identical. So, uh, consequently, the fabric has one um, face size, which is this one. We will see it on, you will see it on your screen tomorrow when we will simulate the structure and the reverse one. So, we have a face and a, a back side. Um, if the girls know that in last years it was a fashion with the single jersey uh, dresses, we uh, know that we know we i know that the single jersey is uh, tending to roll which creates a lot of problem in the sewing process but some des designers found the utility of this property and they put it um, let's say at the end of one leaf or at the the collar part so it's it is rolling you can check if you have a, a underwear a t-shirt if you cut your t-shirt a uh, fine t-shirt, a basic t-shirt, you will see this uh, this um, process of, of uh, rolling at the edge. It is also uh, when you um, try to pull or you cut a yarn that it is happening, the laddering. Laddering means that the whale, uh, it's, it's going down. The yarn is, is uh, coming back to the initial form, which was straight. This is happening also for the fine stockings for the lady when you hang your stockings and you said, oh, I just had my silk once and now what happened? So this is a process happening to these structures. It can't be uh, foreseen. It's a fact due to the particular um, type of the fabric. Uh, you notice that the, the the real simulation of the structure is complicated and for work knitting is really scary. So people found a solution to uh, simplify this and to have a common language. So if I go now in China and I want to discuss with a Chinese uh, knitter without wording, we will both understand what this means. Because worldwide it was agreed on a system of notation <clears throat> by representing graphically. Then here we have a needle in section. We have a loop, the face, and the reverse. So it's a code, if you want. And we can uh, draw a, a row and, of course, the fabric by using this notation system, which uh, you will uh, find it tomorrow in your software. So once we know what means this loop and this loop, we know what we draw. And tomorrow we'll practice uh, in, in our computers. As I said, for the single fabric face, face and back, reverse side, uh, we have these are plain needs without or with some patterns. We will see what are these patterns. The uh, double knit. From the beginning requires two sets of needles because otherwise you cannot create two surfaces. And if we look to this picture, uh, we can intuit that uh, a single uh, one set of needles, they produce face loop. The other one, they produce reverse loops. And this is what we call it a rib or a double knit. If you look at your sweaters to the borders, uh, to the colors, you will easily recognize a rib structure, which is an extensible one, uh, very easy to stretch. Uh, it's not recovering completely, but it's it's very elastic. So you 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 know it. You have seen it, of course. 
uh, we talk here about uh, very big extensions in this direction in horizontal for the structure. Tomorrow we'll also draw a double knit or a double jersey coming from the single jersey. So if we put, let's say, two, uh, no, I will not explain like this. So what is the tendency here? Um, after knitting the yarns, they have the tendency to come back to their initial form. So they are inside the fabric, they are tensions. They are really trying to get back to their uh, straight form after they have been curved. So um, uh, here, the if you look to uh, your clothes, you will see that uh, on both sides we see the face only the face uh, the face wells because the the fabric have these tendencies to to cover each other uh, if we have time tomorrow i will also show you some fabrics you can see the information you can find the information in the material you have at your disposal again uh, the notation or uh, some symbols uh, comparing to the previous situation you see that here the the back rows which means one set of needles the other one is the back side the back set of needles they both have loops i go back to the representation of single knit here we have only one set of course the machines are different so it's a long story behind um, according to the uh, ratio of the or to the yeah, to the report, uh, how to say, to the ratio, it's correct, of face and back loops, we have different ratio of rib. One by one means that, okay, we have one front, one back, and um, two front, two back uh, side, two reverse loops. So this we call it two by two. This is the very well-known uh, fabrics. I will not insist. You can check your uh, wardrobe. Of course, there are variation. We can produce um, patterns. We can vary the, the the needles they have. We can make a two by five rib and so on. There are many many uh, options. The third basic fabric is the pearl. Uh, if you look into your closet for the warm fabrics for the winter, you will for sure find this because. Compared to a uh, rib, the pearl is, um, if we, we rotate it, let's say, we will see uh, an alternative of rows. Here we had an alternative um, sequence of waves. Here we have an alternative sequence of rows. And the, the back, the reverse loops have the tendency to cover the ones. So we will have, um, I think I, I will show you an image we'll have a different type of fabric which is rather um, uh, heavier than the others it is extensible on this direction on uh, web one it has its own properties when you will uh, do your tests in the platform you find the answers into the text so i i have no uh, doubt that it will be easy for you we have like in case of rib two uh, rows of needles but this time uh, it is alternatively knitted on face, on back of uh, needle beds. So we talk about this, uh, as I said, this alternance. And we may create a rib one by one, which means one row face loops, the other row reverse ones, two by two, which is a different alternance. And uh, of course we can uh, create um, Patterns by varying, like here, um, some geometricals or flowers by um, playing with uh, with the um, with this face and uh, and uh, back uh, loops. I was telling you before about the jacquard, which is a typical structure um, made of colorful yarns. You will, I will also show you tomorrow in the lab. We have. Um, some fabrics with modified loops. Uh, here, uh, so far, we had normal loops. In the example, in our example tomorrow, we'll discuss about um, mist loops. Mist, yeah, this is the term, held of mist. So when we enlarge one loop over two or more rows, as well on some 
other particular um, loops, which are tags. So here on top, we add a tag, which is something like a triangle uh, disposal of the yarn. And obviously I will think to something which is going uh, wider. These structures, they have different properties. If we have these uh, missed loops, then we um, improve the dimensional stability of it. Also, uh, here back, we have some floats, and these floats are like a small uh, yarn, so they will improve the stability on this direction. And here we will have some uh, more volume structures given by these tags. Some examples with missed uh, stitches, we can create some uh, waves on the fabric. And with stacks, yeah, we can vary the, the pattern, the aspect, and also the property. We can give giving more volume. Um, the example, another example, which hopefully we will manage to program tomorrow, is the spacer with knitted fabrics. I don't have in laboratory special yarns, but um, just to for exploitation of the technology. Uh, we, with the students, I work with these examples because they should know what they can, uh, where they can use the machines. And the simple principle is just to have two layers of fabrics connected by uh, by yarns. And uh, the connection can be in both layers with a tuck, with a yarn. Depending, these are examples which are more spectacular because if we use for connection monofilaments, which gives uh, certain compression properties, or example here, we use some electrical um, uh, conductive yarns, then we get a completely different structure application. Like here, I took it from uh, Shieldex company, the heating structure. And uh, also some sensors or some um, electronic parts can be uh, hosted in, in this structure because they are characterized by a different thickness. Uh, a more, a more spectacular fabrics in this case offer work knitted fabrics where the maximum uh, thickness is something like six centimeters. So it's quite a piece of fabric. Where, of course, inside you can uh, play with some parameters, like in this example, where we can have various ratio of um, connection uh, yarns. You see the, the, in fact, here the, the um, uh, beauty of this structure is that you can play with the internal structure. So here it's, it's the, the, the engineering part because you can use different yarns. You can use different ratio, different angles of putting the yarns, and then we can imagine that we will have different um, uh, resilience at compression, for example. Of course, having two uh, two surfaces, you can imagine that I could uh, use some um, some type of yarns on one uh, surface, another one on the other surface, so we can also play with the surfaces and we can this way extend the possible uh, applications. Uh, more complicated um, and more difficult to make are the knitted fabrics which are connected by other knitted layers. So here we don't have the yarns, but we have some other layers, which uh, of course are given to the, the assembly of the fabric, uh, another um, geometry is given uh, sometimes another thickness and if um, we use on the the outer surface elastic yarn spandex yarn then when they they are coming out of the machine they get even more thick the the main limitation of uh, the web knitting machines in this case is the limited distance between the needle beds and this is reflected here in the distance between the fabrics uh, because more space you have, you can imagine that you can get a, a bigger fabric. Uh, but here is limited at few millimeters, so you have to find some uh, technological solution to increase that. In case of work knitting, it's larger, as I said, can be more, which is given different applications to the fabric. What, what are these fabric good for? 
just one example of creating the composites. So a composite reinforced with this type of fabrics. And here we talk about uh, glass yarns, about uh, aramides, aramid yarns, Kevlar, for example, uh, which are given different strength properties to the final product. And to create a composite material, you have to uh, finish to uh, finish the fabric, usually with resins. Uh, so to cover the surface uh, under a big uh, pressure, for example, with some pumps to uh, put some resins on top and then to create some rigid structures. As well, I will show you tomorrow a sample. Yes, the same uh, fabrics, but from different yarns. Again, in medical field, an example of a knitted orthosis. You will see here open also. They are not cut. They are made on a single stage on the knitting machine. I was telling you that um, um, the, the big advantage of weft uh, technology against the warp one is this possibility of creating, of designing some 3D shapes. What means 3D? Because also spacers are 3D. But we talk about a uniform fabric with a certain thickness. This is one type of, uh, let's say, three-dimensional fabric. But in this case, we discuss about fabric which are not uh, uh, touching uh, completely the surface. So they have uh, a certain thickness on, on different parts, let's say. It. In this case, uh, the web technology is allowing us to remove, to reduce the number of needles. Here's just a small cell. This is, this is the, from the software and this is the knitted one. These parts, imagine that you sew this part with this one this one with this one and i think you can imagine that this is like uh, from your socks because this is the principle the heel from the socks and here is are these two closing line shaping line we call it so we have the chance the possibility to uh, remove some needles from the working uh, width and we call this narrowing and then to insert them back uh, in the same line symmetrically usually and here this this uh, let's say this loop will be closed with this like we sew and we create this uh, this 3d this 3d shape this is very uh, i don't know where i put sorry I overlap this this um, drawings uh, as example in your material is the uh, semi hemispherical or semi spherical uh, form, which means that we can create such a um, a shape. Yeah, hemispherical as is. As also, we can create a sphere. Uh, it's not very easy. I mean, it's not immediately you get this um, um, disability to do it because, of course, we have to first to um, draw the 2D pattern, this is happening in the software. Uh, we have to make some calculation if you want to make a helmet, for example, helmet, uh, uh, for example from aramides, of course, you have to be sure that the dimension is correct. So we have a designing part, some calculation, but basically in the software, we, did, we draw these two patterns, and then by, by this, um, binding off, I will, I think yeah, this is the term, binding and these shaping lines, we finally managed to get a um, spacer shape. I got this because of PDF, sorry about this overlapping. So this is the one of the example you have it in, um, in your, um, in your material. I don't know if I should continue as one. Students, you're there. Um, let's say uh, you have finished these presentations. Many thanks for this kind and interesting presentation.